Wes here from Find A Way Voices and in this video I will demonstrate how to adjust your audio files to meet our required audio specifications. I am the head mastering engineer of the audio team where we review the files of each submitted audio book to ensure that it will meet the specifications of our long list of distribution partners. This video is for individuals who might be having a difficult time meeting these requirements or this video can be used to verify once audio files will pass our specifications. I must say that this is not the only way to adjust your audio files. There are other methods that involve high-end professional audio equipment and software and plugins. The methods that I will cover today are simple adjustments that can be made in an at-home, small studio, digital audio workstation environment. Our software of choice is Adobe Audition. It is a very affordable DAW to record, edit, and master audiobook productions. It is equipped with pre-installed tools to help you pinpoint exactly where your RMS values are and other audio statistics of your files so you're in the know and you know exactly where those values are and you don't have to wonder or guess where those values could be. Our audio requirements break down into two different sections. Uh, the first section would be audio file structure and format. So this covers the the order of the files and, and how things need to be structured in order to meet the specifications. And the second section would be the technical audio requirements. So that would involve the audio statistics and the values, uh, loudness values, uh, different durations of head time and tail time, things we'll get into in a moment. So we'll start off here with chapters, credits, and any introductions must be standalone files. So this means you can't have a combination of two chapters contained in one audio file or a section and a chapter contained in one audio file. Each individual audio file has to contain a individual chapter. Here's an example of what not to do and how you can fill this requirement by having two sections combined in one audio file. To Dad from Kelly by Kelly Lytle read by Kelly Lytle. For Mom and Aaron, life is like a box of chocolates. Every day is a big bite. Rob Lytle. So after listening to the opening credits, we heard a dedication at the end of the opening credits. And sometimes there's a dedication. Many times there's an introduction to the audiobook. These would be examples of the combination of two sections contained in one audio file. In order to adjust this audio file to meet the specifications, we would have to separate the two sections and save them as standalone audio files. The next requirement would be files must be no longer than 120 minutes each. To determine this, you want to swing over to the duration of all of your audio files and ensure that none of these files are over 120 minutes long. If you do discover that there's an audio file that is longer than 120 minutes, that audio file must be broken down into sections and those individual sections must be saved as standalone files as well. Now, when you upload those individual sections back to the Voices site, they must be named part two of the original file and they must have the same required specifications as the other individual files. The next requirement would be proper order and should start with a verbal indication. So this means that each audio file should begin with a chapter heading or a section heading. Acknowledgements. The final letter. Dear Dad. More. Dad's dad. So you want to make sure that each file has a proper chapter heading. If you do not have a chapter heading that will cause your audio files to face delay when it comes to some of our distribution partners, they're pretty strict on having headings to each chapter. And for some audio files that are a author's note, you might get away with not having a chapter heading for an author's note, but for chapters and sections, um, the best bet would be to have a proper heading in front of each of those audio files. The next requirement is that the opening credits must contain the title and author and narrator names. So this is a big one. This will cause any audio book that we submit off to some of our most popular partners to be rejected. To Dad from Kelly by Kelly Lytle. Read by Kelly Lytle. It is very important that the title, the author, and the narrator be identified inside of the opening credits and any additional information outside of the 
The title, the author, and the narrator might also be considered a combination of uh, two different sections. So if you have a title, an author, and a narrator, then you also wanted to give a brief description of the audiobook. That will be labeled as having a combined section with your opening credits, and you would want to separate those two into individual audio files. So for the opening credits, you only want to include the title of the book, the author's name, and the narrator's name. And if you want to provide copyright information, that will be acceptable as well. Moving on to our next requirement, the closing credits must reference the completion of the book. So this means that the closing credits should reference the completion of the book. It should state the end. It should, uh, in some way, shape, or form, let the listener know that the audiobook has come to an end. It can simply be the narrator saying the end. It can also be the opening credits played again just to stamp the book as a complete production. To Dad, from Kelly. Bye. Kelly Lytle. Read by Kelly Lytle. Any more information than bringing the book to an end would be considered uh, combining a section with the audio file. So if you wanted to give uh, more information about the book or if you wanted to give um, information about the author uh, and about the author audio file, it would be best to separate that audio file and, and keep that into the back matter section of the audio book and leave the closing credits simply as the, the end of the book. That wraps up our audio file structure and format. We move on to our technical audio requirements. And the first one is that all audio files must be human narrated and provided as FLAC or MP3 files. To ensure that your audio files are in the right format, swing over to the source format of the audio files and verify that each audio file is an MP3 or a FLAC file. If you do have FLAC files, we will prefer you to upload those files as opposed to MP3 files because FLAC is a higher quality format than an MP3 format. Our next requirement is that each audio file must have an RMS value between negative 23 decibels and 18 decibels with a peak below negative 3 decibels. Meeting this requirement can be very difficult for a lot of different um, engineers and audiobook producers, and it's a matter of using the right software to generate and accurately uh, pinpoint these values. And once you get that nailed, you're pretty much in a good space, but it is the combination of uh, knowing what to look for, as well as having the software to calculate the values of the RMS. And here in Adobe Audition, uh, this is what we use to calculate these values. Um, they give us a clean read of each value and we're solely seeking the total RMS value here to ensure that each file has the negative 23 through negative uh, 18 decibels. And then we'll address the peaks after we address the total RMS. So total RMS is um, a value that you want to address first in many different systems. And this can get very complicated very quick, but to break it down in, a, in the simplest form, there are different ways to achieve this requirement. And I'll start with the simplest way. And the simplest way is via Adobe Audition because there, there are a few buttons to push and the values are accurate. So as you can see, these audio files do not meet the specifications for um, total RMS or for peak values. And in Adobe Audition, there's a ITURBS algorithm here, which lets you set the target loudness to whatever you would like to set it to. I usually go negative 20. 0.5 decibels and we're going to set this peak. We're going to keep it here at negative 3.5. And again, um, hats off to the software. This is all Adobe Audition doing most of the work for us. Once you run this process, the software generates these values for you. So as you can see, the total RMS for all the files are hovering around negative 21.3 decibels in the peaks are all set to negative 3.5, well below the three, negative three decibel threshold to meet this requirement. That is the easiest way to meet this requirement. Another way to meet this requirement would be to, um, in Adobe Edition as well, hop over to the total RMS feature and set the total RMS to negative 20.5. And you'll see after you run this process that the peak values will adjust as well. 
So as you can see, the total RMS of all files is now negative 20.5, but that has also adjusted the peak values of all the audio files, which are now above the negative three decibel requirement. And unfortunately, this will cause an audio book to be uh, rejected from some of our, our partners. And uh, many engineers um, simply see the total RMS being within the range here and the peak RMS being outside of the range, and they would hop over to the the peak settings and uh, adjust the peak settings back into the proper requirement. And after you run this process, so as you can see, we have a negative 3.5 peak value for all audio files. And now the We've made that adjustment. The total RMS for a file is negative 23, which is outside of the range. Um, this is enough to drive uh, someone crazy. Uh, many times we get questions about changing the total RMS, which also changes the peak and, and back and forth. And in this situation, we would advise to do these steps in this exact order. Um, keep the total RMS of all files at negative 20.5. negative 20.5. Uh, all of the files will now read negative 20.5 decibels for the total RMS. Um, to get this peak under the threshold of negative three decibels, we'll go into the effects dropdown and we'll click on heart limiter. So this unfortunately does take away some of the headroom of your audio file, which is a small trade-off for many different reasons. Um, this is only in cases in which the other processes didn't work and there was no way to adjust the total RMS and the peak and have both values within the right range. So inside of the heart limiter, you'll see that you can set the heart limiter to negative three. 0.5 decibels. This will simply chop off every single peak that uh, goes past that threshold. And after you apply this process, you'll hop back over to the window here. And you see now this file reads negative 3.5 decibels, well within the range to pass this requirement. Follow the same process for the the remaining files that are not within the range and you should be good to go to meet this requirement. So the next requirement on the list is a maximum noise floor of negative 60 decibels. The noise floor is the audio that is present when the narrator is not speaking. So to determine this value, we will simply highlight an area where the narrator is not narrating and loop this area so we can see exactly where it comes up down on the VU meter at the bottom. So once you analyze the VU meter when the narrator is not speaking and you don't see the volume going up past negative 60 decibels, you're good to meet this requirement. If the narrator, I mean, I'm sorry, if the noise floor is above negative 60, this can be a tough one to adjust. And in this situation, you really wanna make sure that you take the right steps in pre-production in your recording setup and the recording environment to address all noise floor issues. So at this stage, we're kind of in the mastering part of the production process and the noise floor should, is, is something that should be addressed in pre-production. So this involves the recording environment and the equipment that you record with, as well as the uh, tracking engineer that records the production. Our next requirement is that the format of the audio files must be at 192 kilobits for, per second or higher for the bit rate. The sample rate must be at 44.1 kilohertz and all files must be either mono or stereo files and it can't be a combination of both. All audio files submitted to the Findaway Voices site must either be in MP3 or FLAC format. For the MP3s, the following sample rate and bit rate must be accounted for. So as you can see, we'll, we'll swing over to the source format of the audio files in Adobe Audition, and we'll clearly see that the sample rate is at 44.1, the bit rate is at 192 kilobits per second, and all files are in mono files. So we won't have any problems meeting the specification with these files here. If you did discover that your files were in the improper format, 
you can always adjust those settings once you export the audio files out of your DAW. The next requirement is head duration as must be between 0.5 and one second of silence, which is room tone. So this means once you scroll to the front of each audio file, I'll bring it into the multi-track window to give you a better visual. There we are. Okay, so here are all of our audio files and the narration of the audio should begin within 0.5 seconds to one second of the beginning of the audio file. So this entire area here would, would be considered the, the head of the audio file. So if you see that there's a head of the audio file that is longer than 0.5 to one second, this would be a reason in which one of our partners would reject the audio files due to having an, an extended uh, head duration. So to address this, simply just trim back the head time to be within the range and continue to do so for the preceding files. So now that that adjustment has been made to all of the audio files, we can visually see that every audio file has a head duration that is within the 0.5 to one second range. So we are all set to meet the requirement of head duration being between 0.5 to one second for all files. The next requirement is tail duration must be between one and five seconds at the end of an audio file. So this means the end of the audio file we apply the same principle as we did for the head, but now we need to ensure that each file has one second to five seconds. So here we can see that the end of this audio file has 5.2 seconds, and we can determine how long this tail is because once we've highlighted the end of the audio file, we can use the selection view window to see exactly how long that duration of highlighted audio is, and this would result and a rejection from our partners. So we simply trim this back to four seconds to meet the requirement. And we follow the same practice for the remainder of the other audio files. So after the tail duration has been adjusted for all audio files and we're good to go as far as the tail duration being between one second and five seconds for all audio files, we move on to our last requirement, which is no copyright material or extraneous sounds, which can be a combination of any type of background noise uh, interfering with the audio files. This is something that we really can't gauge. There's honestly not a lot of things that you can do in post-production to address these issues. Our best advice would be to address outside noises uh, during the pre-production stage. And there's really... It's, it kind of ties our hands once we're at the final uh, mastering phase and the uh, essentially the delivery of your audio files to a partner that those things uh, come about. With all of the requirements met that we've covered in the past few minutes, this concludes the breakdown of our audio requirements. I hope this can be used as a reference to anyone who uh, might need just a small bit of uh, of greater detail and clarity and and why these specifications are what they are and how to adjust your audio files to meet them. If you do have more questions, you can always reach out to us at support at findawayvoices.com.